This is AIM Agenda. The Environment Minister Josh Frydenberg heads to Marrakesh tomorrow with the Foreign Minister for the latest climate talks. What are the implications of the Trump presidency, though, for that Paris Agreement, which um, we know the US did agree to under the Obama administration, but uh, how soon can Trump pull out of it? Because that's his commitment. I spoke to Josh Frydenberg this morning. No, it doesn't. The Paris Agreement was one that was adopted by more than 190 countries, and more than 100 countries have now ratified the agreement, and Australia has followed suit. This is an important global agreement to reduce emissions, and we have our own target of 26 to 28 per cent emissions reductions by 2030 on our 2005 level. So we'll go ahead and implement the suite of domestic policies in order to meet our commitments at Paris, but it truly is a global agreement. It was a major step forward when so many countries adopted it in Paris but last what, year. One of the, uh, the, the major breakthroughs was the deal between China and the US, the mm. two biggest emitters. Now, if you've got one of those two biggest emitters pulling out, as Trump says he will, from these international climate agreements, well then, that, that surely undermines the deal that you're talking up this morning. Well, you're right that the United States and China are the two biggest emitters. The Chinese produce about 22 per cent of the world's emissions, and I have to say it's going up under the uh, Paris Agreement because their emissions will increase about 100 per cent between now and 2030, and the United States around 16 per cent of the world's emissions. But it takes four years under Article 28 of the agreement before a country can pull out a country cannot unilaterally end the agreement, uh, but if a country does decide to pull out, uh, there's a wait period, there's a notice period, and the earliest that can take place is 2020. And so if the US does do that by 2020, as a percentage of global emissions, does it then also end the Paris deal? Well, Kieran, you can understand the president's uh, yet to be sworn in. January the 20th, he becomes the president. I don't want to preempt uh, the decisions that he would take uh, from then on. Uh, right now, we have over 100 countries who have ratified this agreement. Australia's joined that list, and the foreign minister and I will represent uh, Australia at the upcoming meeting in Marrakesh. You described uh, Mr Trump recently uh, to me and, and previously as a dropkick. It looks <laughs> like Paul Keating agrees with you. He says... The foreign policy of Australia is basically we have tag-along rights to the US. It's time to cut the tag. It's time to get rid of it um, in the wake of the election of Donald Trump. Look, I reject Paul Keating's comments. Australia uh, has a wonderful, uh, strong, uh, historic relationship with the the United States. Uh, it's the bedrock of our security partnerships around the world, the ANZUS Alliance, put in place by the Benzies government back in 1951. But should Paul, that Paul be Keating, regardless of who the leader is, even if they are contrary to our own values? Well, we have similar values with the people of the United States. That is what underpins our alliance relationship and our bilateral partnership, and it's across so many areas, not just the strategic and the security, but also America is our largest investor, uh, foreign investor in Australia. It's but you believe that the president's a dropkick? No, I said uh, yesterday that I thought the foreign minister and the prime minister had hit the right note with their language uh, during, the, the during the election campaign. Is that and not, I, not, not being up front? <laughs> well, I, I, I concede I probably should have followed their lead. So you don't think he's a dropkick? Well, I, I, as I said, that's in the past. I'm focused on the future. Um, I probably should have used different language during the campaign. And you won't repeat it now. Well, the Minister there speaking to me earlier this morning here in Melbourne. A quick break. Back in just a moment. Stay with us.